you want to do first? Mm -hmm. Let's do your song.
can't count to four though. I don't know how to do that. Or two. No. Or barely That's even one. Thing. That's the difference between this and like the other night is like smaller groups, it's easier to control all this stuff. Figure out where you're at and everything. There's mm -hmm. there's less pressure because it's just two people. Yeah. So it didn't really matter where you are. And the blues is pretty easy to figure out where you are too. Yeah. If you stop playing for a second, you'll realize where you are. And at least one of the two people should know what's going on at any given point in time. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I say in my sleep. That's why you're an expert music teacher. It just feels like I'm yelling at kids. up the song and real book you'll find yeah. it in like in C and E flat and B flat and everything. So I'm like okay we'll see how it goes. Um you are gonna do like a barn burner tempo of this what tempo you want. And do you know the head? Yeah. This is good. Yeah. It might take me a couple chords to get all the chords right. That's okay. We'll play the chords first. Thank you. 
successful mm -hmm. channel. That's it's it's tough going through all two fives because I got to make sure I'm in the right key and mm -hmm. I land in the right spot. Yeah, and as make sure as you hit the right minor. Yeah, yeah. And you can fake it by just playing like by just playing fifths mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's true. And turning them all into seventh chords. <laughs> yeah, ish. As long as you land on the wherever it's going. Turnaround is really good. I love the turnaround. And I, I left out so many ideas that I had for the turnaround. I know. It's, me too. It's I, was, I was nailing them all over the place, you know, by myself. But I love that turnaround. That was always like one of my favorite things. That's one of the first songs we played in um, my first combo. It was like the second or third song, Take the A Train and then um, this one. And this is the one where they told us about like two five ones, and they're everywhere. You need to know this. And it's Tritone sub. Yes. It's so yes, it's great. such a well-written song. Nice job, Tad Dameron. I couldn't tell you another Tad Dameron song, but that was a hit. It's a great one. Yeah, I don't know any other Chad Dameron song. Yeah, so I was stoked when you called that tune. When I realized what it was, because I got confused with another song. Well, that one. So I'll remain nameless. I'm. That one I know because. At my UCSD jazz camp audition in 10th grade, they made me play that one. Did you sight read it? Mm -hmm. Nice. No, they were like, this is an right easy there. song to sight read because there's only a few notes. I didn't. It, it is. And it is now yeah. that I know it, but like on the spot, I didn't know how to sight read well enough to even like really do mm -hmm. it that well. And I couldn't. No, and now you know it well enough. And to honestly, it's a hard song to solo over if you don't know that much about oh my God. jazz soloing, which I didn't at the time. So. It is. Like, if you don't know. If you don't know your way around like a two five two one. five one, then you're lost. Mm -hmm. And the secret is hitting all the all the chord tones and hearing how they really. This song is written on piano. You can mm -hmm. tell because like the voices go in certain directions, and that's what makes the song work really well. Which, if you're just playing like blocky chords, you're not going to catch that. But if you got like all these voicings, it's, it's a nice descending. Thing. Well. That turn around with something else. It's so metal. But it descends from the most kosher thing. Yes. Yeah, and that's what they used to teach us about, um, like you said, triton substitutions. And figuring out what, what is happening. Three and seven, why are those notes important? You realize when you turn them inside out, you get a whole different thing. That's really cool. And then eventually you realize you can play whatever you want over that, as long as you kind of like you know land in certain spots. Yeah, which is really cool. It's a lot of fun. because mine was all ratty and you actually got one. Pretty sure. I'll think of a song too. I have a couple ideas, but... Um, no, it's not. I don't have a real book. Mm -hmm. Well, I think my real book's at school and it's missing like the first um, few letters of the alphabet. Yeah. That's it. That was fun. You played really well. Thanks. You shred. Did you listen to yourself from the other night? You played really well. I don't know how you're recording it. You recorded it too? Yeah, because uh, mine, it was pointing toward your account, so I hear you a lot better than me, and you sound great. You sound like you're leading the charge. And that poor guy calling out chords all the time. Uh, Sawyer, when he came over last night, he said, uh, that guy he just kept on calling out chords, and I didn't know what he was talking about. Right? So he was trying to talk to him. That's what I and said. And it was like a waste of time. I said, dude, that dude was really expecting me, and he couldn't, like... It didn't compute. I'm just, he had like an idea in his head of what I'm he just glad it happen. wasn't just me. Nothing. I thought I was no. lost and I thought maybe no. feel like and I was... And you know what you ended up doing? 
what I noticed, and I don't know if you were realizing it or not, and I was doing the same thing, I was just following the bass player. Mm. Who was Sawyer, and Sawyer's a good bass player and he's always trying to come up with like new ideas, but they're not weird out of left field. They, you know, they make sense with whatever's happening. Yeah. And he was doing this and having a conversation with that guy. What the fuck is talking about <laughs> that guy? But that was a funny scene. I didn't even know. Jams are like, um, you know, it's like what you guys do, where you each take like a take a course or whatever, a few courses, and you pass it around. And if you're on fire, you know, you get longer. If you're not feeling it, you go to the next guy. Do you know any of these songs? Probably. In my. Is Donald Lee in the real book? Oh yeah, let's do Donald Lee. Do you know it right now? Not off the top of my head, I don't see a chart. Well, you know, I know it's it's you know, basically rhythm changes. Right Is it rhythm changes? And then it does like the. Let me see. What you have? Oh yeah, we you're supposed to. I agreed to this. That's right, didn't I? Fair enough. I'll, I'll um, do an easy do you one. Have, do you have any charts? Yeah, you can click on one of those videos. Oh, it's so hard to see one. It's just, I'll pick a really easy song with three chords. No, no, we can do, um, let's see, let me look at Donnelly. I want to look at the, um, I, I want to look at... I remember if I remember Donnelly. Here's the part. We got you. a lot going on here. to it, right? Oh, that was I used to be able to play that really well. That's a fun one to play. I forgot how to forget the last bit. It goes all the way up and all the way back down. chart up there. Oh my gosh. Dumb monkey. We can even have it going with us. That's like something Black Sabbath would do when they play over. That's how they made videos in the 70s. fun when you do a whole thing and you don't even press record. Oh yeah, it's, it's just CISO. There you go. It's just two four. It's 16 bars, right? It's in the back of the yeah. form. Because it has like a middle really long eight. song. Or we could do... No, let's try that. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm down for the challenge. I accept. Okay, I don't remember the entire head perfectly, but... 
That's funny. Well, I mean, as well, Charlie Parker couldn't either. It's okay. But let's be not too fast. A little slower than you were playing. Yeah. And maybe for a few minutes, you can speed it up. sheet's easier to follow for me anyway. Is it for you? Like, see the melody? It's easier if you just know that it's 2-5-1. Think about it simpler. Look, A, okay, so a flat. It's, it's just, and they throw in the F as a transition. And it does, so it's 1, 2, 3, stays on that for two measures and then it goes into Changed. Tedder Madness is a great, a great Sonny Rollins song. Here, I'll unmute it. memory at that tempo yeah and you want to fly at it try it play it play the tempo 
Yeah. I can comp faster than I can solo. So whatever you're comfortable with, put it out. Here top.
better than a lot of people could play Donna Lee. That's good. I'll that's say fun. That. That's a challenge. And it's it's fun to like try and do things once the form gets kind of comfortable and then um, get lost and be able to find my way back again. This song is actually kind of intuitive to solo act. Yeah. You... This song makes more sense than some of his other ones. Mm -hmm. The head is just super yeah hard and the way hard. like the way you learned it and the way you started playing it it makes so much more sense than the way like i was taught like it, this is totally like oh the, yeah the way yeah i mean yeah. that's what john this is like me. this is like yeah. makes a this lot is like sense. new orleans style music where you yeah. have like you know you turn everything into seventh chords it's but like this it's like a gospel music this little transition from That little thing is so yeah. fishy, and I was always like, "What is that type of thing? The ascending, but it's descending to the two yeah. from the five of the yeah. two, but yeah. it's ascending in chromatically from the one." So it's yeah. super cool. And that's what that's the cool thing that you learned is that in on the guitar, you're not always like planing notes in the same direction. It changes how you think of everything if you know that you can make notes go this way and that way at the same time. And that you, you work some chromatic things in there and it makes sense. That's why the B7 works. That's why the F7 to the B7 works, because they're all like fives. And that's like total like New Orleans stuff. Louis Armstrong stuff. That's where he got that. Those guys were students of that. Now this makes a lot more sense as, you know, as my old ass self than it did when I was, you know, twenty. Mm -hmm. When I was your age. When I was younger, I was like I started I started college when I was eighteen. So yeah. Oh my god, I was like Carrie's age. It was. Carrie right now is the same age I was when I learned um Lady Bird. Wow. Take the A train. Nice. And then we were introduced to stuff like this. This stuff did not compute. I had no idea what was happening here. It was weird. Because I wanted to play it like a, a blues because I kind of understood mm -hmm. like twelve bar form. I kind of understood the blues. See, this makes sense. This is kind of like Django. Yeah, this is totally like that. And Gypsy's Gypsy Jazz does a lot of that, where you're you know you're moving things chromatically. You're doing fives of fives, and because that that kind of voicing works really well on the guitar. Four to a minor four. Yeah. Turning the one into the seven happens every change, yeah. and it's turning the one into a seven is, is key. That's what's great about them being six chords all the time, is you can do that. You can turn them into sevens, you don't have to worry about major sevens and stuff like that. Exactly. Which six you do chords more are in best. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's six a lot chords of are freeing. Yeah. Definitely better than it's totally seven like, chords. Yeah. Gypsy Jazz is so guitar centric. Yeah, it's great. It's like, it doesn't really make sense to, to other people, but yeah. And this song works really well for that. Like I was thinking of all kinds of things I could do if we played. We should, um, you introduce a chart, and um, we actually like learn it. It becomes a third song. Before we know we're doing a <laughs> stupid concert. That was fun. Well, we it's a good suggestion. Django song also. <clears throat> because if I play that, if I play that for a week, I should be able to solo intelligence. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be one of our songs that we do. Yeah. This one is the one I've been working on. Reworking on. Django's Tiger. <laughs> the, this is calling it complicated. That's the best part about a sixth chord. A minor sixth chord is that the seven, the five is just the same chord. he's off in rhythm like he's just a little behind or ahead I don't even really know 
You can only play it along with him. He's playing straight. He's not swinging. No. Well, it is so, but that's just on the first lesson. But yeah, he's doing other stuff. Yeah, he is. You're right. He is but playing like the straight. faster lines, he's doing straight. Which and he's makes playing it on. Weird. He's not playing anything weird melodically either. Uh -huh. No, it's all in the pocket stuff. But he's just like, if you play to the chords like this other chart, it just gets off so fast. <laughs> The second part.
My notes sounded weird because we were used to all of our other songs. Yes, and the that, jazz was, that was stupid, and and that's like the most obvious guitar key in the world. Yeah. I know it's a, it's a fast song though. It's, it's fun. Enduring. I can hearing. I I should be able to. Um, I should be able to play one better if I remember the key. Mm -hmm. And then it was really funny when <laughs> it then <it> ended. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> That's how I always feel. Where am I going to go? That's how I always feel like when I'm in every guitar you, lessons with John. You forget everything you know mm -hmm. forever. That's that was really funny. That was a good one. Yeah. And then it, that's a good head. You sound good on that too. Like you're playing like a lot of good stuff, it's so good ideas. Hard. I am still and you're on stretching it. out your ideas. Keep stretching out your ideas. What I've been doing lately is I've been finding like notes that work across chords mm. and just play those. That's what the slide does. Is you realize that you can't you can't do shredding and stuff on it. I mean, you could, but it's really hard and to play. But if you play like melodies over things, then the chords make sense. The melodies help make the help the chords make sense. And to try and play a different melody than the than the head of the song is, mm -hmm. is fun too. Superimpose other melodies on it, whatever. Now listen to his solo. It's like off. He's, he's playing, even though that's all like fast lines and everything, it's melodic. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's shooting for, is like the phrasing of everything. That's, that's an excellent example. Yeah, no wonder people worship him. Yeah. It's great. We have the CD, you know. Did you know that? That I have that CD? <laughs> this one's in there somewhere. It's in that cabinet. I just realized it was on Blue Note. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a hard Django song. There's plenty of easier ones to play. No, that's good though. I like that. I love like those. Um, I love those chord changes. Mm -hmm. I've been using those a lot lately, like for ideas, like the, um, the, um, the um, yeah. It's so good. Can't go wrong with that. 
Yeah, and then when you, you get turn that, that like piano player stuff too, uh -huh. that they don't teach yeah. you like as a guitar player. Because it's all about the way that it is. That's like, the whole point. You know, you play an A chord like this, but if you play it like this, uh -huh. and this is the low note, that's the one that's ascending. And it's exactly. Like you were saying earlier. In the guitar, we want to do... Um, which also does work, I guess. But if you go up to the sick, yeah. yeah. And that's the trick with this too. That's what I was trying to do: is not play it like a guitar player, like with obvious like chords and stuff. I try not to get down there too much for the E chord, even yeah. though I did wind up there sometimes. And then like whatever, I, what I challenge myself is with wherever I am, I try not to make leaps. I try to make it, yeah, you know, step you up be able to, play to where something. You are. Yeah, that's the hardest part. Yeah, that's what we, yeah, Art, Art, um, Art Johnson was my guitar player, he's, he has stuff on, like, uh, he has stuff on there, but, yeah, he would make me do that, like, okay, this week, we're playing here, mm -hmm. and then we'd, yeah. we'd only be allowed to, like, do that for that's whatever what song. Because mm -hmm. that's what a horn player does, realistically, mm -hmm. they don't have this. No, they don't have the horizontal range that we do, which makes this such a complicated. They have, like, from here to here to here, if that. Even that is huge. That's what makes this so hard to sight read on. It's because we have too many choices and so we don't really learn the notes. We just kind of learn shapes and geometry. Yeah, shapes and geometry. sharp seven even though we play a lot in a and e i mean you do for the turnaround right but that's the only time you use it yeah or if like if you're comping and like there's just a bass player um then you can do all that and it works and it actually sounds better i like i like the way that the sixth chord is the seventh chord sounds better it should be sevens it turns your threes and sevens inside out that's why it's so effective they even go a step further Do you know this one? Oh, yeah, we used to play Mr. PC. We used to play like it's super easy. Yeah, it's just Mr. Fast. PC was one we liked when we did um, when we when our little jazz group would play out. We would always do that. Was, our jazz group was full of guitar players who were trying to play jazz, and minor blues were fun.
not fall on my ass, and land on the two. <laughs> there we go. And try not to play in the key of A flat. See, that guy is haunting me up there. But this has that, that um, uh -huh. seven, six chord. Yeah. No, that's how a weird. That's how I would always have thought of it if I had looked at it. But look, it's so easy. It's a, to go to that voicing, but I got it. Well, here, I would okay. Because look, you can keep the same fingering throughout the whole song if you just, just do that chord. Look. So where's... Oh, yeah. There. And then you just change it around a little bit for your A7. But you're pretty much right, only... You only ever play on these three strings. minor seven but really it's a minor six so it's, if you do it's more confusing the read than it is it's to way show more people yeah yeah it's the, stupid john is always like he's just don't no don't learn by play reading this no stuff. and you can see like my default reading is to play everything is like me too though or me whatever. too me too that's that's the thing but yeah it's, yeah and it sounds so much nicer with that version with like the fifth in the bass which is what happens trying to get the last four. Because the second time it is that... playing the this is like your, this isn't I'm thinking that this is a 12 bar form no I or yeah. 16 bars but it's really 32 and so yeah okay I was playing the end of the um, first day first 16 sorry that's what I was looking for Those last eight are really great. 
play him like you have all to you it gypsy like people. It's no other way. Do you play the A minor as a yes. six chord? He's, you just do everything. It's all six, six chords. Look. So it's like a hard player's with seven chords. Look. look at me. Look at me. <laughs> Changes. That's what's messing me up. The shape changes two times, yeah. right? So, wait, so it goes, starts with the A minor, right? Yeah. Two C, and then it does the long. It's down. It's down to B, right? Yeah. I was doing for all blues, only it's with open chords. So yeah, I really like that down there. That's why I like G so much. And I do the same thing with C. Whenever those are happening in a song, I always do stuff like that. Things like that are hard to replicate on a slide guitar. 